The first reminder, brothers and sisters, that we want to get from this verse is a reminder about ikhlas in our actions. Ikhlas in our actions. Very important, brothers and sisters, for those like yourselves who want to do good work for the Imam of the time, who want to be those special servants of the Imam of the time. How much ikhlas do you and I have? And I start with myself as a reminder. How much ikhlas do I have in my actions? When the Imam's looking at our hearts, you and I, brothers and sisters, right now, in our presence here, and what we do in our social lives, whether we're dealing with family, friends, politics, how much ikhlas and sincerity and selflessness does God see in our actions? How much, when we're doing Islamic work, is it about our organizations and the name of our organization? If I'm, let's say in my family, when I do something, when I do my part in the relationship, how much am I doing what my responsibility is in the house only for the sake of God and not for the sake of the people, not for worldly results? And then there's higher levels of akhlas that inshallah we can get to, higher levels where I'm not even seeking jannah, but rather ridwanullah akbar. There are higher levels of ikhlas also. Now those I can't discuss because, I mean, if I make it into paradise, I've done a big thing. I would love to be searching for and seeking for Ridwanullah, the pleasure of God. Inshallah, Allah grants that to all of us. But even if we can get to that first stage, that there is no worldly desire in the efforts that we make, even the Islamic efforts that we make, even when we're involved with organizations, how much of it is purely for God? Allah has some ahadith that are a little bit difficult. A little bit difficult. Let's listen to one hadith. This is hadith Qudsi, and it's from Imam al-Sadiq. Right? Because all of us, you and I, we're looking for results for our actions. It wouldn't do us any good that we're mu'mineen. We've denied ourselves the good of this world, hoping and praying that God accepts our actions. And on the outward, it seems like a lot of good actions. But then God, when He looks in our hearts, he doesn't see ikhlas in our actions and he rejects. Okay? So let's listen to the hadith, hadith Qudsi. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He says, Ana khayru sharik. God says, I am the best partner. This is a scary one though. I am the best partner. Ana khayru sharik. Faman amila li wa li ghayri. So whoever does some good in action, piety, taqwa, in action for me and other than me. Man amila li wa li ghayri. Fahuwa li man amilahu ghayri. If that's the case, I give whatever you've done, whatever we've done, if it's a little bit of less than God in it, I give it to the other person. Brothers and sisters, ikhlas in our actions, in everything that we do, not only in our prayers, which we're doing qurbatan Allah, but even in our social interactions. If a little bit there's nafs in it, a little bit looking for name and fame, let me give you an example. Sometimes this happens in Muslim organizations even. In work that we want to do for the name of, in the name of God, in the name of religion. Once Bahlul was watching some individual He's making a masjid. So Bahlul came over to him. He said, who's this masjid for? He said, of course, the masjid for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, is that the case? Let me put my name on the masjid. Bahlul's mosque. And the guy said, no, why should, my name should be on it. I should be, I'm doing all of this effort. Lack of ikhlas. I want my name to be on it. I'm doing Islamic work, but I want there to be somewhere, some notification, some people know who's making all this effort. I want everybody to know, everybody to recognize. Outwardly, very much Allah, ikhlas, Islam. Inwardly, what is it? Is it really ikhlas? Does it matter when I'm doing Islamic work? Does it matter if somebody else takes credit? 
Somebody else's name is on it. Does it matter to me? Will I still do the work? Somebody else is going to get credit. They're going to benefit. They'll, people will know them. They're the mu'minin who did such and such. Do I still participate with the same amount of ikhlas and with Bahlul and this other guy? If you're doing it for God, God knows. If it's done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever's name is there, does it matter? God knows. If it's for him, it shouldn't matter. The guy, when he heard Bahlul say that, he said, look, whatever name you want to put on it, Bahlul's maaz, somebody else's maaz. He realizes there's no ikhlas there. They said that in, eventually Bahlul ended up putting an ayat of Quran on it. Right? But the idea of, for, from a practical point of view, is sometimes the reason that I won't cooperate with others, can't work with others, can't do projects with others. Part of it is sometimes that we have a difference of opinion. Part of it sometimes maybe I want credit. I want my name to be there. Let me give you an example from some of the shohada, the ikhlas that they had. There was a shaheed, and his name was Ismail Daqaiqi, Ismail. So what happened is that the brothers noticed, they said that when we would come into our bunkers at night, we would see that our boots had been waxed. Ismail Daqaiqi is the commander of the entire base. We will come into our bunkers at night and we see that somebody has come in the night and is waxing the boots of the other mu'mineen. And nobody knows who this is. Ikhlas. Middle of the... Let no one know. The more I can do work for Islam and nobody know that I've done anything. I'm an unknown soldier of the imam of my time. I'm not on the front, I'm not in the... right. But God knows. That's what's important. They said, later we check, we find out after checking, it's our commander. Oh.